Welcome to Mtoto News Insight. I am Peter Midwa. Female genital mutilation across Kenya has gone down over the last three decades, but the progress is not enough to keep up with the rising population. Should this slow progress continue, we will see a rise in the number of girls being cut. At least 400 Kenyan girls have been cut as a rite of passage into womanhood some being cut as early as five to nine years. Girls who undergo the cut are most likely to stay out of school and forced to marry early. Without education, these girls are unable to acquire the knowledge and skills they will need to secure their futures. This could even be a serious threat to our economy. Dr. Tatu Kamau, a medical doctor, argues that women should be allowed to do as they please with their bodies. She wants the ban on FGM lifted, arguing that the ban is not in favor of cultural practices, which she argues is, a, is everyone's constitutional right. But lifting the ban on FGM will encourage the prevalence of this harmful practice in girls. The pain, the bleeding, and the infections of the wounds are extremely against the rights of the child to be alive and be protected from being hurt in their body. Um, the girl child, I'm not, as I keep on saying, I'm not interested in the girl child. The girl child, a girl has to be protected in their decision making and should not be forced to do things which maybe they are not prepared for. So, so for the girl child, this, uh, the Children's Act can continue to protect the girl child so that the child is not put under undue pressure to change or do things that uh, they, they wouldn't want to, to do or that might be done in a harmful way and the child has got no way of um, you know, having any recourse to help. We have to take this matter very seriously. If there is little action taken between now and 2050, the number of girls cut each year will rise to 192 million more worldwide. Change needs to be the way forward. The public should come together and support alternative rites of passage for girls in communities that uphold this taboo while fighting against the harmful practice of cutting the girls. Let's support Don't Touch FGM law and help secure the future generations of our girls. During the launch of the Association for Alternative Family Care of Children, it was appreciated that children should not live on the streets. The county government should put the children in a more family setup rather than in an institution. A number of children have been rounded up and taken to a rehabilitation center at the YMCA in Bahati. Yes, we appreciate that children should not live on the street, but we want children to live not in institutions but in a caring families. And today as an association, our position is we have alternatives. Those children, if we come together and open our hearts and our doors, then they will find the love, particularly those without parents. They don't need to stay in an institution. They don't need to stay, uh, you know, uh, in places where, you know, they will ask, where did I come from, isn't it? So reuniting children with their families, if they don't have biological families, then the alternatives are very clear. So even as we appreciate the response by the county government to clean the street, our position is we need to get to work together with all the stakeholders, including the county government of Nairobi, to find a sustainable solution. Putting children in a remand home, yes, the first impulse is let's rescue children. But there are those who will need rehabilitation. There are those who will need reintegration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then where do we reintegrate them? 
we will reintegrate them with families if we find the families where they came from. But if not, then we have to create awareness and make Kenyans aware that you can open your door to a child and uh, you know, give warmth and love to that child instead of letting that child stay on the street. We believe that together as a community, together as a country, we can do better for our children. Less than four years after Boko Haram kidnapped 200 girls in Shibok, news emerging from Nigeria is that the illegal militia group has kidnapped 110 girls. This has come in the wake of global advocacy against sexual abuse among girls and women dubbed as Me Too. Testimonies from some of the 200 girls who escaped the captivity of Boko Haram is that girls are subjected to sexual abuse, used as human shields and to carry bombs. <laughs> I was at home packing food when we heard gunshots. We ran into them, Boko Haram, as we tried to escape. They surrounded us and asked us where we were going. They said, since we've caught you, we are going to convert you to Islam. They told the Muslims to stand on one side and the four of us Christians to the other. They released the Muslims but kept us. I kept pleading for him to leave me alone because I had my baby, but he refused to listen and told me to put my baby down. So I put her down. When they wanted me to kill the first man, my body was shaking and I fell down on the ground. They forced me to get up and watch as they killed the second person. At that point, I was thinking I should go grab a gun from the insurgents and kill myself since they had taught us how to shoot. Although President Mohamed Buhari has apologies to the country, and called the incident a national disaster, we call for international community to add to their efforts to ensure that these girls' lives don't get destroyed. That was all for today. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe to our page on YouTube at Mtoto News. I am Peter Midwa. Good day.